I want to, it is Father's Day, and of course I want to say Happy Father's Day, but I want to um, look at something that I think is a little more concerning, and uh, even though we're saying Happy Father's Day, I want to, I want to, I want to speak a little bit different. See, man, why in the world you got to deal with something like that on Father's Day? Can't we just say Happy Father's Day? Well, I could, but at the same time, I want to make sure that we're uh, operating from a perspective of what I think God would have me to minister today. And so, turn me in your Bibles to 1 Kings 15, 1 through 5. And this is going to set us up for um, what I want to share as, as a text. But I want to look at that. Because I, I, it, it's so important. It's so important that we understand the signs of the time in which we live. I think it seems to me that oftentimes we as Christians, we get caught up in, in doing things sometimes the way the world does. And this is a very costly thing. So, so let's look right here at 1 Kings 15, 1 through 5. We're going to read this, and then I'm going to give you the text, and then we'll, we'll jump right into the message. Now, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Naboth, reigned Abijam over Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Maacha, the daughter of Abishalom. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. Nevertheless, for David's sake did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the manner, in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And I want us to look at another scripture. It's right there on the bulletin. Ezekiel 18.4 says, Behold, all souls of mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And so I want to I want to give you, a, uh, of course it is Father's Day, but I want to give you as a title today, um, Sins of the Father. So we see here that this particular king, it's believed that he didn't, he didn't serve long because he didn't just observe the sins of his father. He walked in all the sins of his father. And yet we see in Ezekiel that just because your father sinned doesn't mean you have to sin. Because all souls belong to God. Each one of us can make a decision and say, you know what? I'm going to live for the Lord. And, and you don't have to say, well, I got to go this way because my daddy was like that. My mama was like that. That's just the way we are. We're just a bunch of idiots. No, you don't have to do that. You can say, wait a minute, I got a hold of the word of God. I'm moving in a different direction. People like to use this excuse, and I understand it because it's an excuse. We want to say, well, I would have done better if my mama had done better. I, I would have done better if my daddy had done better or my grandfather. Well, I don't know. Maybe you would have, maybe you wouldn't have. I mean, there's been people that have had great parents, good fathers, and still made a mess of things. It's, it, it all comes down to what will you decide to do? And so I, I was, uh, years ago, I read a book by uh, Dr. John Cherry, and the name of that book was Saving the Seed. And so I want to pull a few things out of that book today. He's going on to be with the Lord now. But it's, um, but I, I don't, and, and, of, and of course, his book, uh, if I remember correctly, the emphasis was on, 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 um, on uh, black people. In other words, the idea 
that if, if, if black people were going to survive, they would have to preserve the seed. Well, I want to I want to use some of that that he's talking about, but I want to talk about it from the perspective of as Christians. If if Christianity, if the church is to survive, we must preserve the Christian seed in the earth. In other words, we cannot we cannot live for the devil and then claim ourselves to be Christian. Have you ever noticed? And maybe you didn't notice this, but I've noticed something. Many times, what people will do is they will try to put on you what you ought to do as a Christian while they're never doing any of it. They'll find one little teeny weeny thing over here. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. They're lying, cheating, stealing, gossiping about people, doing all kind of stuff. They want to find something. They're looking for something. You know, the Bible says that none of us are perfect but Jesus. So if you look long enough, you can probably find something about me that's not perfect. It's going to get on your nerves. Get over it. Just get right on over it because I ain't tripping with you. Huh? See, because the bottom line is, what are you doing that you know to do? Or let me say it this way. What are you not doing that you know to do because you've got an excuse that somebody else didn't do something? That's the problem that we have in the church. Many, many people do stuff as well. So-and-so didn't do this. So-and-so. Listen, you're going to be standing before God all by your lonesome. You're going to be standing right there by yourself giving an account for what you did or did not do. The Bible says we have to give an account for all things done in the flesh. And so I want us to understand here that when we look at this, Abijam, he only, again, he only reigned for three years and, 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 and he walked in all the sins of his father. Well, you didn't have to, you don't have to walk in all the sins of your father. Well, your father was a this or your father was that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You know, God is our father, our heavenly father. He will speak to us through his word. And, and, and all we've got to do is say, you know what? I know what my daddy did, but you know, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do something different. Amen. Amen. You know, now let's, let's just move on. Now, listen. A father's sin can lead to ruination of a child. A child can learn how to rebel against God, how to rebel against the things of God by listening to and following the example of an ungodly father. But at the same time, a child can learn how to serve God and how to honor God by following the example of of a godly father. But remember this, there's always a choice involved. There's always a choice. That's why we see, you know, uh, it, it tells us, choose you this day. The man of God said, choose you this day. Why would he make such a statement? Didn't he know that my father was no good? Didn't he know that my father did not do the right thing? How dare he say, choose this day? Because what he's saying is, I, you, we have a choice. We have a choice. And oftentimes what we do is we're looking for an excuse to not do what we know we should do. We're looking for an excuse. I'm here to tell you that we don't need to make excuses. When you look around today, you can see many of the problems that we're having. Not just for black folk, for all Americans. Missing fathers. Now some fathers are missing what we would might say for good reason. They, they passed away. Sometime in combat, sometime defending this nation, sometime because of uh, debilitating diseases, sometime because of accidents that have occurred. But some fathers <laughs> live a block or two from their children and child don't know it. Yes, sir. That's the sin of the father. So when, the, so when the child should have been disciplined, the daddy was part of it. When the child needed diapers, daddy was buying liquor. See, we don't like to talk like this anymore. We wonder what's wrong with our nation. We wonder what's wrong with our communities. Because fathers have advocated responsibility for raising 
your children. Now, I, I'm going to step out here and say something. It doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, but it doesn't matter what happens between the mother and the father as, as pertaining to the responsibility of a father. If, that, if that's your child, you have a responsibility to, to, to see to it that they're taken care of while they're children. And, you know, to be honest about it, as, as fathers, uh, you know, they're our children forever. You know, I'm, I'm blessed. You know, my wife and I, we have a blended family that's 11, and I just think that's such a blessing. Got some bonus children. Glory be to God. You know, that's a blessing. And, of course, you know, I told you about Pierre, son-in-law, and his wife, his, his wife, Sheila. You know, they just always bless us. I mean, they just pop in town with little bits of prizes and chocolates. And it just causes our hearts to swell with joy and, 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 and just so much uh, uh, godly pride. They just pop in on us and bless us. And they bless us in all kind of ways. I mean, you know, just amazing. And so we see, see, but, but see, that's the result of being a godly father. Now, 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 you got to understand, sometimes when you're being a godly father, people think you're being mean. See, sometimes to be a godly man, you're going to have to tell your children, you're going to have to conduct yourself in a way with your children to protect them from certain things, especially when they're growing up. Amen? Can I go over here? No, you can't. Everybody else is going. Everybody else ain't your daddy. Yeah, you know. Now go on in that room before you get tightened up. Huh? Yeah, we're not talking about a dance, neither. It'll be a dance, but won't, but one person will be dancing. <laughs> Somebody else is going to be swinging. Anyway, now, the thing about this is that when we look at this, oftentimes we've allowed ourselves to get so far away from the book, even in church. We've let ourselves get so far away from the book. We, we, we spend a little time meditating in the book. You see, we're going to the world. Now, one of the things about uh, uh, growing up in the things of God, you know, you and I need to develop uh, the ability to think clearly. But, but let me give you like, let me, let me put it to you like this right here. Thinking clearly is like being in kindergarten, getting yourself ready to study the things of God. You hear what I said? Now, if you're not careful, oftentimes you'll think, well, because you're a critical thinker and you can think clearly, you think that's all it takes. No, no, that's just a stepping stool for you to approach the word of God with a sense of clarity so you can step into the deeper things of God that will transcend natural human logic. Now, natural human logic is important because you just can't be a scatterbrain. Yeah, you be a scatterbrain, everybody will tell you all kind of stuff. You know, Pierre and I was talking about this last night. I mean, them people, them people, I mean, Lord have mercy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the people sold all their stuff, got, sold their cars and all this stuff uh, 30, 40 years ago and took it all to Jim Jones. And then we saw them on television all bloated up and swole up out in that hot jungle sun. Some drink some poison Kool-Aid. I'm fighting somebody. Talk about some drink some poison Kool-Aid. I'm jumping right on you. <laughs> yes, I'm in. Well, no, I'm not. I ain't even going to be there. I ain't even going to be there and say, you on the, I ain't coming. You leaving America to live in the jungle? Bye. I ain't going. Well, we, well we, he the man of God. Well, let God protect you. I ain't going. Give my money back. <laughs> now, you got to understand something. When we talk like this, oftentimes we live, in a, we live in a time when everybody wants to have the right to say what they want to say. With, uh, and don't, don't, don't care if it offends you, but you're not supposed to say anything that might offend them. That is some retardedness. Huh? So, because I love Jesus. Who don't say, don't say Jesus might offend somebody. Well, welcome to, I said, you have a right to be offended. And I have a right to offend you standing for what I believe. Now, see, you got to understand something about freedom. Freedom is about the right for you and I to speak our peace and compete in the arena of ideas. It's not enough to say, well, wait a minute, we don't want you to offend me, but, uh, uh, but, but, but we're going to say all kind of ungodly stuff to offend you. I, I'm going to give you an example. I, I find it offensive that uh, a homosexual pastor, pastor a church. Not that it's offensive that he come to church. Because he might need to come to church to get free. But how are you going to help me? He ain't even trying to be free. Yeah, 
somebody offended right now. Just offended somebody, ain't that something? Because you know what it is? The world expects us to be cowards. And so it is. We have become cowards. I want to read something to you right quick. See, because, you see, a lot of times what happens is we don't think about these kind of things. And, and, so, and so instead of us helping people, instead of us rescuing people, we end up with quiet mouths. And, 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 in, the, and in the process, because we're so quiet, some people do not even get rescued if we would just open our mouths. We're so afraid. Somebody going to be mad. Let them be mad. Well, they might not buy anything from me in my business. Don't let them buy it. Well, they might not want to hang out with me. Well, don't let them hang out with you. Well, they might not come to my church. Bye. <laughs> I was preaching one day, and I was in it, boy, and I had some signs. You see, I ain't got any signs up there now. But I used to have a sign that says E-X-I-T. And I said, if you don't like it, there's E-X-I-T. Hit it. And some people did it. I ain't going to put no sign up there like that now. I might get carried away. But, you know, I'm just kind of joking, but I kind of mean it because when I stand here to, to preach, I'm not preaching to impress you. I'm, I'm not preaching for you to like me. I'm not preaching for you to invite me to dinner. It'd be nice if you do. I'm, 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 I, you know, uh, I'm, I'm preaching so you and I can walk closer with God, so you and I can understand who God is from the biblical perspective, I have gotten so sick and tired of Christians always talking about, well, you know, you can't trust the Bible. Well, what you going to trust? The Quran? What you reading? The newspaper? What you going to Facebook to see? How to live for the Lord? You done lost your mind. You're going to look at something else. Well, a man wrote the book. Well, what book have you read that some man ain't have something to do with it? Anybody ever read a math book? It didn't float down from heaven. What about the Quran? A man wrote it. The question is, were they inspired of God or inspired by somebody else? You choose. I already chose. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want to read this to you. Here's what it says. It says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, comma, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It's protected in the Constitution that I can, I can serve Jesus. I mean, oh, well, a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, a San Antonio mayor was telling the pastors that they needed to send the notes for their sermons in so they could uh, review them and see if it was politically correct. Boy, shoot, you ain't getting my notes. I'm preaching. Yes, sir. I might put some extra stuff in the notes. Just cause. Or abridging the freedom of speech. Speech. You know, people, listen, listen, they don't care. Listen, people can say all kind of despicable things, all kind of things, and don't anybody care. They don't say a word. Stand tall for the things of God. And all of a sudden, this issue is hate speech. That's hateful. To call godly speech hateful. But haters gonna hate. But when haters hate, they want to they call you a hater. You know why? You know why? Because fathers are missing. Fathers are missing. There's something about getting your behind toe up by your daddy and straighten your own out. There's something about it. I mean, there's something about it. I had a child one time. They called me to school. He running up under the desk. Teacher tell him to come. He's evading the teacher. Just running all over the place. Just running wild. This child, just so rambunctious, just going kee kee kee, just laughing, having a good time. They called me. I went right on out there. They saw me. Hey, daddy. I said, yeah, come on here. <laughs> yes, sir. I took him on back to school after a little visit. <laughs> the next day, the teacher said, I don't know what you said to him. I said, I ain't said nothing to him. I whipped his behind. I told him. She was kind of like, she didn't know how to take it. The Bible says, talking to fathers, spare the rod, spoil the child. Now, people say, well, well, you don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. That's why we got so many problems right now with so many people. You say what you want to say. See, see, 
See, now you say, well, why would you say it? Because I got the freedom to. The freedom of expression and the freedom of religion. Freedom of my faith. My faith says, correct children. I was corrected. Did me some good. One time, man, I got the fool beat out of me for stealing a dime. Every time I got ready to steal something, that beat would come back to my mind. I said, okay, <laughs> go ahead on. Had to make yourself do something like that. Now, let's just move on. I want you to see something here. When we understand the importance of fathers, fathers are so important. And, and, and we got a we got a twisted, we got a twisted, oh hallelujah. We got a twisted court system. I think it's I think it's run by a lot of witches. Because one of the things that they do, they create they, they create concepts and ideas to separate the children from their fathers. So I, I remember when I was going through some domestic situation, and so my, my money was messed up, and what I was doing was all messed up, and I was I was all together. I had, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars past what I was going to require to pay rent. And them rascals told me, them snakes told me that I had to pay uh, uh, $500 a, a month for child support. I said, well, how am I going to pay rent? They said, that ain't my problem. Well, If I live outdoors, who am I going to help then? Oh, I'm, I know I'm supposed to go sleep on somebody's couch. Oh, no, wait a minute. But if I decide to be a deadbeat and do nothing, then you'll charge me $25 a month. And who the devil getting taken care of by $25 a month? Huh? They, yeah, they ain't even going to get it. They don't worry about $25. But if, boy, you trying to do something, here you go. Now, you say, well, 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 pastor, uh, uh, you have to take care of the children. I do. That's why the Bible said, don't leave nobody. But you can leave who you want to leave if you can sick the court on them. And dig in their pocket. Oh, you say, wait a minute, why you got to talk about this? Because I'm the pastor of this church. And I talk about what I want to talk about. I mean, it's as simple as that. Freedom of expression, freedom of speech. I'm the preacher. Now you got to understand something. What's wrong with that? Well, well, I, I, I you, you know, the situation changed. Ain't nobody send me five hundred dollars a month. I'm just saying. I ain't got five hundred dollars a month yet. Oh, well, if you were so gung ho, why couldn't you be gung ho the other way? Cause you're witches. That's why they want children to be raised without their fathers. So they won't know how to respond to authority. So they can be beat over the head. Oh, yeah, we've lost our mind. That's what we've done. We've lost our mind. We've turned the, the, the leadership of this nation over to ungodly people. And we're running around trying to figure out what's wrong. I know what's wrong. God has left the building. And we're looking for everything. And to blame it on. Tell you what it is. Somebody need their daddy to whip their behind when they little. Now you you can't jump on them when they're teenagers because you might have to kill them. <laughs> yeah, I mean the truth. That's uh, uh my wife was telling me about one one lady. She said something that God made babies um uh, little so that uh, they they too cute. They so cute you don't kill them, and um and and they too little to kill kill you. But when they get about big as you, you better already have that stuff established. Can you imagine, you know, if Pia, Pia about was six, he big. And so, you know, say he's my son, say he's my son, you know, and I just let him talk back and, and be disrespectful and everything. And now he's 17 years old. And I'm talking about, boy, I say, shut up. He said, he said what? <laughs> but if I trained him, see, he'll understand respect. Him and I were talking about that yesterday. We know people. They won't, they won't talk to respect anybody. Now they're adults. They can't respect anybody. See, we talk about this, that, and the third, and we pulling stuff out of context. Well, you know, the police did this, that, and the third. I'd have been stopped all over this country. But see, I was taught how to be respectful. So I'm always respectful. I ain't got dragged out the car yet. Just telling you. I mean, you know, just 
intelligent, just kind of bring that out, you know what I'm saying? Huh? And what are we going to do? We don't have any police. Do y'all know some of these criminal minds will come in your house and pistol whip you and take your stuff? They don't care about your race. Black, white, everybody. They beat everybody down. Huh? I've seen people, do you know? Do you know? People say, well, you, you shouldn't say that because, you know, you know, listen, uh, most of the murders, the homicides are black people killing black people. He said, well, you shouldn't say that because more white people kill white people too. I know that, that's, but that's why I'm saying it because we're trying to make like some group of people are angels. Ain't no angels. There are no angels. We're all people that need Jesus. And the main problem fathers are missing. If you got a daddy that's done got on your nerve in your life, you are blessed. Yes, sir, you blessed. Evan, you blessed. Won't you blessed? You blessed. Amen. Highly favored. <laughs> Amen. And you got to get a hold of this because a lot of times people say, well, my daddy this and my daddy that. Did you have one in the house helping you? Did you have one making sure my son Christopher said something to me one day after he moved to Charlotte. He said, you know, Daddy, I, I, I realize now, but, you know, I appreciate that you sheltered me. Yeah, I ain't going to know him because he was doing, you know, well, I'm 16. Go in that room. Sit down somewhere. <laughs> well, my friends, this, that, and the third, boy. <laughs> I get the eyes doing like this right here. Now, see, the first the first set, they ain't even get a warning. <laughs> Beating just happened. They in the middle of it. Ah, what happened? Yeah. You say, well, now why is that? Because I'm going to tell you something I learned in the word of God in my own personal experience. Let me tell you what. I got a lot of reproof when I was a kid. My wife and I, we teased each other about this. It seemed like I was getting beaten every day. She would say the same thing. It seemed like I got beaten all the time. Because my, something would come across my mind, and I would just do it. Something would just show up, and I would just do it. One time, one time, my had the graham cracker up on top of the cat. It wasn't up. I was look. I figured I want me some graham cracker. I pulled the chair over there. I got up on the cat. I got the graham crackers in my hand, opening the paper, and she walked in the door. You can't even recover from standing up on something. You can't even. You can't even act like you wasn't doing nothing. You up here. You up here. You can't even get down fast enough. She's supposed to be at work. She went to work. <laughs> One time, my dad, he was decided, he told me not to fight Bonnie. I jumped on Bonnie. He said, you don't mess with them boys out there like that. What do you say to so he figured he was going to give me a whipping, but he couldn't run fast enough. So I just ran around the house. And he ran behind me about three times. Finally, he went on in the house. I waited till it got good and dark. Waited till dark. Till I finally went in the house. Didn't nobody say nothing. I figured I done got away with it. I got in the bed, sleeping. Guess who got woke up in the middle of the week? <laughs> he took the cover and rolled it up over my head and everything and held me down and tore my behind up. I ain't fighting no more. That's why I never punched a woman. A man whipped me for hitting my sister. Huh? I've been mad enough to. Oh, now don't look at me like that. I've been mad enough one time I got so mad in the situation, I just started jumping. I had to do something with that, didn't you? Because I was trained not to swing on one. Just jumping. My head almost hit the ceiling. If I'd have been, anyway. You see, you have to understand something. That manhood is an important part of a civilization. Masculine manhood. Not drag, 
for the devil. Huh? You don't want me to have a Bible study in the class, but you want a drag queen to come teach the children? And I'm supposed to say that's okay. Well, it ain't okay, and I ain't going to say it's okay. Now, somebody can live how they want to live. Just don't come contaminating my children. You live how you want. See, people say, stay out of my bedroom. Go back in your bedroom. Get it off Main Street. You want to do the, do it in your bedroom. Huh? See, what's happening is fathers are missing. See, when fathers are engaged, they can't get away with this stuff. They can get away with it because most fathers or disengage. We become so liberal, and when I say liberal, I mean morally. See, that's really not liberal. When you when you when you understand what classical liberalism is, it's about it's about it's about individual responsibility. See, I'm responsible. There's not a collective responsibility. Society owes me this, that, and the third. No, you're responsible. I remember when I was in the third grade, and uh, right here at Riceboro, and and one and one one little boy. We, was, we got into it one day because he called me he called me a word and and I when I jumped on I think I popped him and you know we, we we would fight and we went to the principal's office and I'll never forget the principal Mr. Sauce I don't remember his first name but I remember prin- he went there he said he said what happened what was his name Michael Michael Sauce yeah he said uh he said what happened I said he called me a hmm. he said okay well you go on the class see individual responsibility. Not all white people were guilty. That one was guilty. Not all black people were guilty. If I would have been wrong, I would have been guilty. And I was made, and so since I didn't start it, he told me to go on the class. He handled it. You know what? I don't know what he said. I don't know what he did. I ain't had that problem from that dude no more. We, you know, we got along good from then on. But see, what we do now is we say, well, you got to understand what they going through. No, no, I understand they ain't getting enough beating. They ain't get enough correction. Sometimes you need to be corrected. I don't care who you are. Sometimes you need to be corrected while you're a child so you'll know not to do that. Oh, I remember talking back one time. Blah, 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 bap. Whoa. That's how that feels. Even when it comes across your mind, you think, okay, I'm going to keep it. Well, that shows up on your job. Now your boss done got on your nerve. Instead of you going off, you just say, well, okay, let me just go on in the bathroom. Look at it. One day, one day I was working for somebody, and they got on my nerves so bad. They got on my nerves so bad. It was all I could do to, to, to not say, you know, you can take this job right here, and you can stick this thing right where the sun don't shine, except I was not going to say them clean words. Well, y'all look at me like that. Some of y'all still cussing. I ain't cussing in years. So some of y'all still cussing. I'm talking about B.C., before Christ. Well, Christ was there, but, you know, I was still struggling. But I didn't do it. Well, you know what? Come to find out, because I kept my peace. Look, blessings came. I think we, because of the organization that I was working with, we ended up getting a church van. We had a couple of church vans, getting a couple of vehicles personally. I mean, all kind of blessings and so forth and so on. What if I had just went on off? See, the reason that sometimes we mess up, because our fathers were not there to correct us, to teach us how to be respectful. So we don't know how. See, everybody who had a father, let me tell you something. Everybody who had a father, they didn't mind tightening them up. They got some horror stories that they could tell about, boy, they felt like they was being brutalized and they're taking advantage of and abused and all that kind of stuff. But if you had a good, well, I'm going to just put some mothers, if you had a good, strong mama that would tighten you up, you know, you might be playing some records, but you knew not to go too far. <laughs> You're messing with somebody right there. <laughs> you knew not to go too Now, Now, listen. Thank God for strong women that have had to take on that role because the father was missing. But the woman's not supposed to have to do that. Thank God if she did it, she did it because she had a she had to do it. But fathers, we're supposed to be there. Now, I know a lot of people want to say, well, you know what? You got to understand what they went through. Well, I went through some stuff. You know, people say, well, you know, you, you, you just had it good. You just lucky. You don't even have a clue. I was having to deal with issues, not not some any kind of abuse or whatever. When I was like uh, uh, nine years old, eight years old, trying to figure out something, well, why, well, why I call my grandmama aunt? Well, why, well, why my mama and daddy ain't never get married? So why I'm calling my aunt and uncle, and my, and my daddy? Well, wait a minute, how come we? How come this? And then, well, how come? Well, how come all of us got different daddies? were missing in action. See, 
most times women do not become loose by default. They become loose because of the abuse of men and then men not stepping up and being responsible. We don't like to talk about that. I remember I was looking at my two boys. They were six years old, or well, five and eight, and then six and nine. And I, and I went to God. I said, God, what in the world am I going to do? I got these little babies. And I said, you know, uh, I can't just leave. I said, wait a minute. I just need to get me an apartment so I have my own place so I can get my boys finished raising them. And so God, by God's help and my wife, we raised them. And they're respectful. Now, don't get to looking at them thinking that they're perfect. They know perfect people, but they respect them. Yeah. And they're strong-willed children. For our daughters, they're strong-willed. We don't play with her. But we taught her to be respectful. She ain't going to cut you out. But it's going to be straightforward. You'll know just what she means. That's the way it ought to be. You know, as a mother and I taught her, stand for it. Stand for what you believe. See, now, some people don't understand this, but let me just break this down. The reason that a father is there to show strength of character, to demonstrate who God is. And you got to have that. Because if you don't, you'll get bowled over. You'll get tricked into all kinds of stuff. You'll get manipulated by all kinds of people, ran over by all kinds of people. Do you know most of us, if we had had a strong enough father's presence right there, some of the mess we went through, we would have never gone through. Ever. We would have saw the danger of that. We would have saw what was wrong with that from the coming from way. But see, we didn't know. See, because fathers don't do it like, you know, nothing wrong with mothers. Thank God for mothers. Mothers tend to, unless they have to, mothers tend to be very nurturing a lot of times and encouraging. And, and you know, fathers can be nurturing too, I think, to a point. But, but, but a lot of times, fathers just tell you, this is the deal. They ain't got time to explain a whole bunch of stuff. And we, you know, this is what it, oh, you rolling your eyes. Let me help you roll them. And sometimes mamas have to do that too because daddy not there. Now she's do, she doing double do. Working, cooking, cleaning, disciplining, and everything. You could almost say Happy Father's Day to some mother because of the missing father. I used to didn't like that. People would say Happy Happy Father's Day to, to mothers, and then I had to I had to think about it. See, see, I was blessed. I had a father, George McGee. But some people did they didn't they didn't have a physical father. Their mama had to do that, and if it wasn't for a strong mama, they'd have been in trouble. Thank God. So happy, happy Father's Day for some of the mothers that had to pull double duty. Let me just move on. I'm just having myself a good time. Listen, God wants, everybody turn to a scripture. I, 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 I kind of got carried away in some stuff right there. I got a few minutes to catch this up. Turn to Deuteronomy 30, 19. Here's what it says. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You see, God wants our seed to live. But, it, but see, we can't be raising them in the world and bringing them to church. We got to be raising them in the things of God while we're bringing them to church. And sometimes the reason the children don't get it is because you're talking about the pastor at the dinner table. See, you can't run down the spiritual authority that's going to influence them and then expect them to get it. Because to, to a child, either you're crazy or the person that you're sitting under is crazy. And so the child processes that the wrong way. They figure, well, if you ain't paying no attention to him, then I don't need to pay any attention to you or him. You see? It's by default. And you have to be mindful of that. But he said here in Deuteronomy, listen, I'm setting this before you. You got to choose life or death. Now, how do you choose life or death? Turn to Proverbs 18, 21. I'm going to show you how you choose it. You got to be careful. Here's what it says, Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Therefore, choose life. You got to control your mouth. I got to control my mouth. You can't say everything come to your mind. You 
you set some stuff in motion. See, a lot of times we set things in motion, and then uh, 5, 10, 15 years later, when the things show up full grown and full harvest, we try to figure out where it came from. The mouths, the mouths that spoke the wrong thing. We decreed the wrong thing. We got in agreement with the wrong thing, and we paid for it. And usually that's because you didn't have a father to tighten you up. See, one of the, one of the blessings that I, I had, I mean, I think I got, I was thinking about this earlier. I think I got maybe three or four beatings from my dad, and I tell you what, every one of them was terrifying because, uh, you know, you just didn't want that to happen. You just didn't want that to happen. So he could kind of ball his face up a little bit, and I was like, I was at attention. Like, oh, Lord, what's getting ready to happen? One time, we was working on something outside in the backyard, and I cussed because I was hanging around people that cussed, so I started cussing too. I cussed, and I was like, uh-oh. I looked back at him. He said, don't let that happen again. I was like, ooh. And he never did, ever. I was a grown man with children. <laughs> he was an old man, but I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know. He might have got some extra strength from somewhere and did something. That's the that's that's good thing about having a good, strong father. God wants us to save the seed. God wants us to save the children. How are we going to do it? Fathers are going to have to become engaged. Some of us are going to have to father children that aren't ours because, of, because we married somebody that had children or because they're in the neighborhood and we've got to reach out and give them some godly leadership. Now, you can't wait until they're 16 years old. This, this, this has to start when they're like four and five years old, when, it, when, when you know, it's easy. See, you know, you know, when somebody four or five years old, you can tell them to shut up and pick them right on up and sit them somewhere. You don't pick no 16-year-old up. Evan's 17. I ain't picking him up. I got a baseball bat. But I ain't picking him up. I'm told something. A lot of negative follow men. More, more boys are born, yet there's more women. Why? Because, because more men get in trouble. Because it's a part of the nature of men. See, we don't like to deal with the masculine realities of men. You can find a hundred books on women and women's psych psychological realities and women of this and when this time in the month and this kind of age and this and you got this and that and all that. You can find all kind of books. It's hardly, it's, it's hardly a, it's any books on men. So people think a man is a woman with different genitalia, but he ain't. A man is a man with a completely different psychological outlook and response to reality. And the reason we get in trouble is because we want to call that abnormal. We're trying to fix men. Men don't need to be fixed. They need to be directed and raised by their fathers. Amen. I mean, I jumped out of trees as a boy. Talked my sister into climbing it with me, but she had too much sense to jump out of it. Me and my cousin, see, how high, who could jump from the highest point? It was the grace of God. We didn't break our legs. Oh, man, I can do that. Jump out a tree. That's what boy, see, here's the thing. God created us to be a certain way. Now the world is trying to mix it up. No, men, don't be masculine. Let the women be masculine. You be feminine. Get out of my face. Oh, my goodness. Some of you don't like this. I'm talking about people listening last week. You ever wonder why there are so few good men to choose from? You know, people talk all the time, it ain't no good men out here because their daddies were missing. And if they didn't have a strong enough mother, they was in trouble. Huh? Your daddy was missing, and if they didn't have a strong enough mother, they was in trouble. People say, well, it's because racism. No, it ain't because of racism. It's because fathers not being there. Got this new thing talking about the reason that black men can't do this, that, and the third is because of critical race, all this kind of stuff, systemic racism. No, 
is systemic fatherlessness. Daddies are not there. And if daddy's not there, you're not going to learn how to act unless you got a strong enough mama to put you in check. Now listen to this. Here's the thing about it. Here's what we're doing. You see, we walk away from the word, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to do things out of order. We're trying to do things contrary to the way God has designed it. We can't have it contrary to the way God has designed it. See, let me, let me just show you this right here. God never intended for a man to become a father until he was a husband. He never intended for a man to become a husband until he was a full-grown, mature man. But now we have a situation that boys are becoming biological fathers and are not committed to be husbands. Well, women are doing the same kind of thing, but we're not talking about women today. We're talking about men. See, see, when I got married, I was 20, when I got married first time, I was 27. I understood the responsibility. So there was times I slept on uh, 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 mattresses, wore uh, not, uh, 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 air mattresses on the floor, uh, wore hole, had holes in my shoes, had, drove raggedy cars, because I already knew that, that once I became a husband and a, and a father, that they came in front of me all the time. Now, if you're not careful and you say, well, I got this many babies, I want to know how many you're taking care of. Because you're, cause you're a man out of order if you're not taking care of them, trying to take care of them. Out of order. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how to fix that which is wrong without taking responsibility ourselves. Now, you're going to get some heat because people are going to say stuff about you and so forth and so on. Don't even worry about that. You just be the kind of man you're supposed to be, be the kind of husband you're supposed to be, and be the kind of father you're supposed to be as a man. Now, if somebody can't do that, somebody don't step up, there's nothing you can do about that. But you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you, you can't spend a whole bunch of time worrying about what somebody else is not doing. What are you doing? You know, and my wife, uh, Dion, is such a blessing to me. You know, it's easy. I tell you the truth, I'm going to say it like this right here. You know, it's just easy. It is easy to be married to her. It's just easy. She don't worry me none. She can speak her mind. She's a strong woman, but she don't, she don't get on my nerves and all that kind of stuff. I don't live through some of that. Because some people do it just to do it. They're not trying to pass on new information. Y'all know you, you've experienced it. Men do it to women. Women do it to men. I mean, you just do it. They're doing stuff just to stir stuff up. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you're moving and operating and fulfilling your responsibility. See, we got to grow up. Everybody want to stay child. Everybody want to stay, I'm me, 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 me first. Me, 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 me. When I was single, you know, if, if, if I wanted a brand new stereo, I just bought a new stereo. If I wanted a new car, I just bought a new car. If I wanted a new tires, the $300 tires with the sun smoke rims on it and get the sunroof cut in, my, in the top of my car, I just went on and did it because there wasn't anybody that I had to check with or be concerned about but me. Everything was about me. Now, when you get married and you got kids, you can't just go do something because that's what you want to do. You got to say, okay, what's going on here? Oh, wait a minute. They getting ready to, uh, school is getting ready to start. Oh, my goodness, we got to get school clothes. You can't just go buy brand new top of the line tires. You got to be responsible. You say, wait a minute, I thought we were walking by faith. We are walking by faith, not foolishly. You got to take care, we got to take care of our children. Amen. And I thank God my wife has helped me with that. Now, God did not bring man into the earth in chaos. And yet and still we're trying to bring children into the earth in chaos. Two men. That's chaos. Two women. That's chaos. Somebody in transition from a man to a woman or from a woman to a man. That's chaos. We wonder. See, now listen. I'm not saying that people don't feel what they feel. I'm not saying that people are not going through what they're going through. I'm just simply saying that's chaotic. That's contrary to good, high standards and morals. I'm not saying that we need to just butcher people and throw them away. We need to be praying for them and loving them and encouraging them and helping them. There were things in my life that I had to get changed and had to get straightened out. We don't like to talk like this.
this, but we need to. Okay, I'm, I'm almost finished. Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 John 2, 15. Here's what it says. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You See, if you're not careful, you'll embrace the ways of the world. What's happened to so many of us in the church? We become worldly. The Bible don't mean nothing. I mean, it's a nice little book to put on the coffee table. So we can impress people to think, well, we got a Bible. And some people only read the Bible when they're in the bathroom. Talking about that's your study. I ain't got no problem with you reading the Bible in your bathroom. You're going to be in there a minute. But you ought to read the Bible some other times too. Don't just associate the Bible with you going to the bathroom like you geek. You ain't geek. You trifling. And lazy. Sometimes you need to read your Bible sitting in a chair with your full undivided attention to hear what God has to say. Amen. Glory be to God. Now, listen. I'm almost finished. I'm going to give you four things that has to happen about the will and the way of God. Number one is spiritually discerned. Yes, you need to have crystal clear thinking. Again, that's your stepping stool to the deep things of God where you can have a clear thought process. But these things are spiritually discerned. Here's what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 2, 1, uh, 2 11 to 14. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. You can't know the things of God just by natural means. You can know about them, but you can't know God all the way. The second one, the things of God will, uh, oh, wait a minute, I, I skipped one. Oh, the first one is the, the order of God defies challenges and goes beyond human logic. I said that in another kind of way, but I want to say it this way. Because, 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 when, see, see, you say, well, that's how I feel. Well, I feel a lot of things. How many of y'all do everything you feel? Don't raise the baby, man. Don't raise your hand. Unless you're the baby over here. Because if you're an adult, there are things that you feel you better not ever do. Yeah, we're telling people, just go how you feel. It's based on what you feel, brother. No, you better do some thinking. You ready to mess your life up? Oh, yeah. And, of course, the second one is spiritual discernment. The third one here, it conflicts with the will of the flesh. Do you know that there are often times when you and I, we want to do something, it's completely contrary to what our flesh wants. Anybody ever, anybody ever had a situation where somebody got on your nerves, you wanted to go to them, but you knew you just needed to hold yourself together? Hold yourself together. Hold your peace. See, listen, as fathers, we can't just give in to the flesh. Let me talk to some of you fathers. So, your children's mother got on your nerves. They didn't treat you right in the court system. And now you mad. Don't you punish the children. You find a way to get past that. You might not be able to fellowship with their mother the way you want to. But the children still yours. You have a responsibility to help raise those children, to speak in their life. Now, you don't know what you're facing. You say, well, well preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't know what you're going through. But I do know this. As a father, we Every one of us have a responsibility to raise our children under the admonition of the Lord. And you have to make every effort to do that. Now, sometimes you still can't do it, but you need to be covering them with prayer then. Standing in the gap. You see, what are you going to do if your children turn out to be messed up and you could have spoken into their lives and had an impact? It'll be our fault. Now, I want to hear, I want to share this one last thing right here. And this is so true. The order of God is often unfair. The person didn't do this, the person didn't do that, and then God requires you to do such and such. It's unfair. Scripture says, 
Love your enemy. That's unfair. I'm talking about personal. That's not talking about nation. That's talking about personal. Love your enemy. Pray for them. They despitefully use you. That's not fair. You want to throttle your enemy. You want to curse them that do bad to you. But the Bible says don't do that. Why? Because even though on the outward it appears to be unfair, what will happen is that stuff will begin to corrode you on the inside. It'll corrode you. So here's what we got to do, fathers. We got to stand. Don't let the sins of our fathers or the sins that we've committed impact our children. Let's keep them covered in prayer. Let's stand in the gap for them. Let's stop thinking about what, what's right for us. I, I remember, you know, going through different things, and I, I remember just without going to a whole bunch about it, but I was talking to God. I said, God, this is just so unfair. And I just went down a whole list of, I did this, I did that. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you kind of having a pity party and stuff. And, you know, one of the things that God dropped in my heart, he said, uh, uh, life ain't fair all the time. Doing the will of God is not fair all the time. Doing what you should do is not fair all the time. But it's always the right thing to do. To be a good father, sometimes you're going to do the thing that you need to do because it's your responsibility to do it. It's got nothing to do with fairness. But if you do it, the Bible says there's a reward. There is a reward. Woo, glory be to God. But I'm going to give you one last scripture. This is what we must do. I want to speak this to fathers, it's to all of us, but fathers specifically. If fathers who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. God is talking to all of us, but today I want to specifically say, you know, as fathers, we just, we just, we just need to turn. Turn and father our children and our grandchildren. Love them. You know, one of the most amazing things that I found out about uh, be, being a father is being strong, but at the same time, knowing how to be gentle. There's times as a father, you got to just be so gentle. One time, one of my sons, uh, the kids came and they were telling me, they said the, the, the son had did something. And I said, what? And boy, I grabbed him. And before I even knew what was all the details, I gave him a good whipping. Boy, I don't you ever do that. And they were like, well, no, Daddy. Uh, that, he didn't do that just now. That was, I think, well, last month or something. And child, I done gave the boy this good, robust whipping. And I picked him up. And I held him in my arms. And I said to him, I said, Daddy, sorry. I should have been listening. I'm so sorry. And I just held him. And I'll never forget because um, that, that, that son that I, that I held like that, he just relaxed in my arms and weeped on my shoulder. And all I could do was apologize. I was wrong. I was wrong. But it ministered to him. See, sometimes as fathers, if you, if you overreach and overstep, you just got to say you're sorry. Love on the children. So they know that you're a disciplinarian, but they know you got a heart of tenderness toward them. They got to know that. Praise God. So, <laughs> so let's, let's do this. I thought I'd just lift your hands into heaven. If your father is still here, I want you to make up your mind you're going to be praying for him. If your father's not here and you had any kind of relationship with him at all, thank God that you had a relationship with him. If your father's here and you have a good relationship with him, I tell you what, you just need to thank God. You are so blessed. You are so blessed. The heart of the father is to mentor the children. Father, I just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for those of us that have fathers right now. Father figures that are standing in that place and mentoring us and ministering to us and helping us, Father, to rise up and be what you've called us to be. Father, I just
to be strong and mighty and godly men that will raise up some godly seed who will defend our faith, who would understand our faith, and we would live this Christian life to the fullness, beyond what our meager ability is, but trust in you to help us. Oh, Father, you're such a good Father to all of us. And Father, I pray you continue to bless us and keep us, strengthen us, help us, Heavenly Father, to rise up and be what you've called us to be. And Lord, we would be able to give you praise and give you glory. We thank you, Father, for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, while you're still sitting there, if anybody needs to be prayed for, go ahead and stand your feet and make your way to the